Mr. Janapo, on this month, to the extent the, that he makes reference to the MPP constitution, that's uh, Mr. Asifwa, the expulsion of a member, at least as captured in the MPP constitution, uh, point eight. Let's put that on the screen right now. A member may be expelled from the party on grounds of misconduct in accordance with the no, issues nine, of the constitution. If you nine. go on to nine. point nine, yes. for feature nine. of membership. Yeah. And a member of the party who stands as an independent candidate against the officially elected member of the party yes, or who joins or declares his or her support for another political party or for an independent candidate when the party has sponsored a candidate in a general or by election automatically forfeits automatically. his or her membership of the party. So it is quite clear with your uh, that's the MPP yeah, constitution that, black and white that it didn't even have to necessarily take the party to write no. to the speaker. If he it, said that you'll be referred to a disciplinary committee or that you face sanctions, then the party would put in place some mechanism to activate mm -hmm. that process. But this one is explicit. It says you automatically. So the moment you file as an independent candidate or the moment you go against the officially elected candidate of the new patriotic party, you cease to be a member. So as a stance, based on their own constitution, these MPs are not members of the MPP. That is not in doubt. It's a fact. And you see, this is not an opinion. It's, it's black and white, and you copiously read it. And I think that anybody who listens to you or reads their constitution will come to the conclusion that these are not members of the MPP. And that is why, in the Formina case, the party wrote to remind the speaker that these, uh, the Formina MP is gone against our constitution. And so he is not a member. And you see, this constitution is not just for the MPP. Because the MPP is a quasi-public institution. And so anybody... It's not quasi, it is. Ah, uh, well... That's even, that even makes it more, more serious. And you know, when Professor Michael Quay ruled in a similar instance, they were very happy with it. The MPP felt very comfortable with it. So what has changed? What has changed so much that today, the same sets of facts, an MP from the MPP decided to contest as independent candidates, they took the position that is gone against their constitution, so it should be taken out. The same thing has happened. They are saying, no, we should have written a letter before. Where in their constitution and where in the national constitution does it stipulate that you, the MPP as a party has to write a letter before? I mean, they are looking at the form and not the substance. And I thought that what Speaker Bagwin did was to follow the president. Of Professor Michael Quay. You said that president is wrong. Who said so? That's I haven't MPP heard him say now. that. I haven't well, heard him he say he's wrong. Disagreed. He says he disagrees with that. that That's what he said. Is taking, the decision he said taking Professor by. Michael Quay was wrong. Yes. Uh, is, that, so far, you, is that what you he said? said, that. said that Michael Quay, the Professor Michael Quay was wrong. No, but. Yes, no, it's a mean, direct that question. Been, that has been our position. That has been our position. That, that has, has been your what? That has been our position ever since. That uh, the Formula MP shouldn't have been disqualified. It shouldn't have been. His seat shouldn't have been declared vacant. That. Then why did you write to the speaker? By, if that is your position that, as a party, yes, that the Formula that MP should not be disqualified or his seat should not be declared vacant, why would you write to the speaker to tell the speaker to declare the seat mm -hmm. vacant? So that's a what kind of double standard is that? That the party that believes that just because a member who is an MP is contesting as an independent candidate. The seat should not be declared vacant. At the same time, rise to the speaker to tell the speaker that declare the seat vacant because the person is going as an independent candidate. I mean, what kind of position is this? It just doesn't hold. And this is so surprising. I, I hope that is your personal opinion. Because well, the party took the position they have held. Say they, not him. The party. Then why would the party rather declare the seat vacant? Do you get my point? If the party believes that you don't lose your seat because as a member you are going independent, why would they even put in their constitution? And then why would the party take the next step by writing to remind the speaker that, look, a member of ours is taking the step to go as an independent candidate, so declare his seat vacant. Official. 
Uh, please, let's stop. Is it this politics of no, convenience? But, but, no, the, the point is that you lose your membership, in my estimation, understand, you, you lose your membership to contest another election on the ticket of the new Patriotic Party. Oh. So why did you write to the speaker then? Because you see, when you read the first sentence... It's it's no, no problem. I agree with your first sentence. Why did your party <laughs> write to the speaker to declare the seat vacant? Why did they do that? Uh, but you see, Honorable Jinapo, the point I'm trying to make is that we have already disagreed with the process and even the ruling of my queen at the time. Michael did not declare the seat vacant. He was sitting here somewhere. And you wrote to him to prompt him that he should declare the seat vacant. You get my point? Your party prompted him. That means, Speaker, in accordance with our constitution, the person automatically forfeits his membership. So we're asking you to take a step further by declaring his seat vacant. Your leadership, the leadership of the party wrote. It's not as if Michael Kwe on his own, or even a member of parliament petitioned Professor Michael Kwe, and he declared the seat vacant. Your party, the hierarchy of your party, wrote to him. So it cannot be the case that you disagree with Professor Michael Kwe when you've asked him to do what you want. And when he does what you want, you then turn around and say, I disagree with you for doing what I want. I mean, it doesn't make sense at all, with the greatest of respect. Uh, no, but I wish I could get a... Can I respond? No, you, I'll come to you for... I want to finish with the Supreme Court. No, but this is a good response no. to what you just said, so that you put matters into proper perspective. No, but... We, no, are, we are saying, that, uh -huh. first and foremost, the Speaker of Parliament did not have the jurisdiction to rule on the matter at all. Yes, I'm petition him. But you know the man doesn't have jurisdiction. Why okay, petition him? The Speaker of Parliament bear, bear the Constitution. And if you read the Benjamin Tetter case right now, that is where I see that the proper interpretation, or if you like, the proper understanding of the law, in my estimation, is being done. Where you go to the High Court, per Article 99, to get the seat vacant. So, yes. The MPP might have written a letter to the Speaker of Parliament. It's not my but I'm saying that no, that, no. that, so that the, couldn't the, have I been, think that in, in putting the issues the in perspective, that's what the MPP wrote to Professor Michael Quay, Speaker, yes. to yes. declare the formula seat vacant. Yes. yes. That happened. Yes. And you're saying that at the time you disagreed with him? Because I didn't hear that. I've been doing this job for of quite course, a while. No, but if you disagree with him, why oh, petition him? That's the first thing. I don't think that... I don't think that... I don't think that... I don't get him at all. I don't get him at all. As a lawyer, to put an interpretation on the Constitution and the MPP Constitution as to how I understand it. I am saying that that was a wrong procedure. Okay. Yes, the MPP might have done that, but that was a wrong procedure. I think that it was the sole mm. responsibility of the High Court, as per Article 99, to have declared a seat vacant at the time. If something was done which was wrong in the past, it doesn't mean that if there's an opportunity to correct that wrong, we don't have to do so. Just well, on the altar of consistency, we cannot do so. So that's an intervention that you wanted point to, make. to make. Okay, uh, let me let yes. me warn you. <laughs> Mr. Anyway, I, I leave that to viewers. I, 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 you, 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 I leave that to viewers. I'm sure they will make a good judgment. But let's be consistent. If you want to change your position, state it. That yesterday, you believed that the speaker had the power to interpret. But today, you are changing your position. But you can't say that your position had always been that. The seat should not be declared vacant. When at the same time, you are writing to invite the speaker to declare the seat vacant. The two cannot be synchronized. And then that level of inconsistency is, is, is very serious. Then they rush to the Supreme Court. And I'm very worried about the Supreme Court as a member of parliament. I'm very, very worried. First of all, the hands that until it's adopted by the House is not an official record by our, our procedure. So what happened is that a day before, the table of face would normally write what they believe is the procedure. Then at the next sitting, before we commence business, it is put to a vote. The speaker puts the official record. We make corrections. It's no speaker, you didn't say this, you said that. This is not properly recorded. You omitted this, you added. Then we adopt it 
as the official record of the house. Mm -hmm. Even before that, somebody manages to take a certain record, which is not adopted. He takes it to the Supreme Court, ex party. The Supreme Court doesn't even listen to Parliament. Because effectively what they did was to take Parliament to court. Not just the Speaker. The Speaker only represents Parliament. And it's a decision of Parliament. And the Supreme Court, based on that, makes those declarations. And that's what Doc said. Effectively, look, what the Supreme Court has said is that they will reverse this decision. If you're listening to the pronouncement of the Supreme Court, effectively, that is what they are trying to do. And they bring in the issue of there can't be a by-election. Where does this come in? Where does the issue of the by-election come in? What if somebody dies? God forbid. If someone dies, what happens? They resurrect them. So, so they should be consistent. And I'm very worried about the Supreme Court, especially the Chief Justice. Look, this notion that she's getting too political is gaining ground. And I think that she can do better by allowing the system to work effectively. There are equally serious cases there. And when it appears to be going against the government, the slow pace at which they handle the cases is worrying for some of us. Because the Supreme Court should be the last bastion of hope. They should be as independent as they can. I'm telling you, my brother, if you want to do a proper survey, and check whether the view Therefore, about this current Supreme Court. That well, that's what he's saying. Fact, and I think that the, the Chief Justice yeah, should be very yes, worried about, about, about yeah, okay. the okay. reputation of the Supreme Court. You see, this situation is turning into a political game. Let's face it. Look, I'm a politician. I can try to defend this side or defend that side because based on Speaker Bagwin's ruling, the MPP loses their majority. If you want to be objective, that is the core of the issue. It's not about the Formula MP or not. At least the Formula MP has, he has even left as an independent candidate and now officially joined the MPP. Which is very clear in the Constitution. And it's clear in the Constitution. His is even more clearer. He was an independent candidate. He is no more an independent candidate now. He's the candidate of the MPP. Mm -hmm. So what is the Supreme Court trying to tell us? Look, let me make it clear as a member of parliament. The Supreme Court can engage in judicial review, but the Supreme Court cannot direct Parliament as to how we conduct our business. And in that house, we are masters of our own rules. And so if you make a certain determination at the apex court, don't just assume that it will just flow like that. And that is the consequence we are seeing. Their ruling was that if the MPs are not allowed to sit, it will affect government business. I'm telling you, government business has been affected. Government business, as it stands, is halted in parliament. And looking at the situation now, I, I, I'm very, very convinced that the MPP wouldn't have any vote there. Because if you yeah. listen to the independent candidates like Cynthia Morrison and Co., I'll be very surprised even if they come to the House to vote with them. They will not. And based on our numbers, it is obvious that they won't have their way. So rather than stepping back and negotiating and engaging each other so that we can find an amicable solution, this Supreme Court idea will not resolve the issue today, it will not resolve it tomorrow. I think that what the leadership should do and what the president in particular should be doing is call the speaker, call the leadership quietly behind the scenes, engage them, possibly reach out to the opposition and see if we can have some middle ground to attend to some agent government business. But if you think because you find favor in the Supreme Court, you would always rise there. I bet you it won't work today, it won't work tomorrow. Because we are members of parliament and we know how to operate in that house. The Supreme Court does not operate parliament. Parliament operates and functions on its own. And let them continue to rule the way they are ruling. And let's see who would win and who would lose. Thank you.